Minority Leader approach the speaker. Okay, call out order number five. Order number five, papers. Honorable Naomi Wako. Honorable Speaker, I beg to lay the following papers on the table of the House today, Monday 13th, May 2024. Thank you. Report of the Select Committee on the proposed dismissal of the Honorable Franklin Mithika Linturi as the Cabinet Secretary for Agriculture and Livestock Development. Thank you. I lay Honorable Speaker. Honorable Naomi Wako, I'll give you three to five minutes to brief the House on the content of your report. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. All your horses, Honorable Tienda Molo, you already raised a point of order that I'll come to. You remember I told you? Let her finish first. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. The Select Committee was mandated to investigate the allegation against the Cabinet Secretary as contained in the resolution of House and Table its report within 10 days. And as I have already submitted and tabled the report, Honorable Speaker, the committee had the opportunity to sit and we were able to allow all the parties to present itself and we gave equal opportunity. Honorable Speaker, in concluding the, the hearing, the committee was guided by the provision of Article 152 of the Constitution and the Standing Orders 64 and 66. On Friday, 10 May 2024, the sponsor of the motion and the Cabinet Secretary made their closing statement to the committee. The, calling, the closing statement marked the end of the hearing proceedings and the, con the committee subsequently embarked on report writing. Honorable Speaker, Standing Order 199 provides that a report of committee shall be adopted by a majority of the members. The committee adopted its report on Monday 13th. Today, four members of the committee dissented and made their opinion known before the committee. The dissenting opinion is attached to the report of the committee. Honorable Speaker, the select committee wishes to thank the office of the Speaker of the National Assembly and the clerk of the National Assembly for the support extended to the committee in the execution of its mandate. The committee further extends its appreciation to the sponsor of the special motion, Honorable Wanami, and also the cabinet secretary. Finally, I wish to express my appreciation to the honorable members of the committee and the committee secretariat who sat for long hours. Hon in honorable Naomi Wako, 
just conclude by telling the House what is the finding of your committee. Honorable Speaker, the committee, in its report, the committee made the following findings of allegation against the Cabinet Secretary for Agriculture and Livestock. The allegation underground one on gross violation of the Constitution or any other law, ground two on serious reasons for believing that the Cabinet Secretary has committed a crime under national law, and ground three on the gross misconduct as outlined in the special motion are unsubstantiated. The committee... Order. Order, honorable members. Order. Order, order. Order. Wanjala, order. Order, honorable members. Order, Hillary, take your seat. Order, Hillary, take your seat. Honorable members, as you know, the select committee has discharged this constitutional mandate. Listen to me, I'm going back to what Otienda Molo raised. Being an ad hoc committee in nature, the select committee now stands dissolved. Two, under Article 152 of the Constitution, as was read to you by the Honorable Otienda Molo and myself, Sabbatical 9A, if the committee finds that the allegations are not substantiated, no further proceedings shall be taken. Two, being oblivious of the enormity of the matter and having consulted with the majority and minority leaders, I'll give the floor to four members on this side, including four members plus the minority leader. I'll give four members on this side plus the majority leader, and thereafter, Order Honorable Marian Kaitani. When the speaker is on his feet, Order Honorable Members, Order Honorable Junet Mohammed, I want to caution you and everybody thinking like you that this is not a matrimonial court. This is a house of parliament. And I will not entertain any extraneous issues. Be advised. So I will allow four on this side plus the majority leader, four on this side plus the minority leader. Let me hear the point of order by Otienda Molo. I will also hear you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I thank you for those directions. I think it is the right thing to do, and I will still be reserving my hope to contribute. But the point of order is this, Mr. Speaker. I rise under Standing Order 90, as read with Standing Order 1071E, in terms of conflict of interest. Mr. Speaker, as a member of this House, and as a lawyer, I have spoken and interacted with some of the members of the select committee. And a disclosure has been made to me that questions and alleges impropriety and misconduct by some members of the committee. And I'm not talking of anything out there. I am talking of things disclosed to me as a lawyer and a member of this House. In that event, Mr. Speaker, it is necessary legally and by our procedures that such an issue is referred to the Powers and Privileges Committee first because in the event that there is any truth in it, then it vitiates the entire report. It would result in the report being a nullity and this house restarting the process. So I need your direction, Mr. Speaker, because I believe that in that event, it would not even be right to discuss the report. It is a preliminary matter to dispel any such suspicions. 
as required by the constitution and by our standing orders, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Honorable, Honorable Tender Molo, standing order 87, standing order 91, and the ones you have quoted, enjoins you on the following. One, responsibility for everything you allege on the floor. Number two, it enjoins you to respect your colleagues at whatever level in a rate in any event. Three, in the event you have evidence to discuss any member, which is your absolute right under the standing orders and the constitution, you come by way of motion. You cannot, and you know it, you are a senior lawyer. I'm your senior, but you're also a senior lawyer. You cannot cast aspersions against your colleagues without a specific motion against any one of them or several of order. Against any one of them or any two or three of them. That there is impropriety, there is evidence, and you want the House to discuss a member. I will gladly approve such a motion if you brought and I found substance in it. In the absence of a motion, I want to encourage you to set the trend and the example as the leading lawyer in this house that doing anything different is out of order. Marian Kaitani, what is your point of order? Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I stand under standing order number 184. Uh, regarding um, uh, advanced mention of, us, of, of a member. When the proceedings of this particular motion were going on, I was adversely mentioned by the Honorable CS uh, to the effect that I was even the sponsor of this motion and I requested Honorable Speaker and I requested to appear before the committee so that I can explain myself because I had been adversely mentioned in almost the whole proceeding when, he, when the Honorable uh, CS was giving out his defense. And because I was not given that opportunity, accorded that opportunity, I therefore request Honorable Speaker that anything that was mentioned regarding me be expunged from the report. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, order, honorable members, order. Honorable member for Aldai, indeed, I got your letter this afternoon saying what you have just said, that you adversely mentioned in the proceedings at the committee and that you needed time to go and purge any allegations leveled against you. Unfortunately, I got the letter when the committee's time was over. The committee has tabled a report. I have, order, I have read through the report. There is nowhere where you adversely mentioned in the report. But understanding order 184, at an appropriate time, the Speaker will give you an opportunity to make a personal statement on the floor of the House, not today. Once you make that statement, it is not subject to order. The Speaker needs no assistance at all. Once you make that statement, Marian, it will go to the Hansard. It will be part of the annals of the history of this House. I'm sure whatever was said about you and I was following the proceedings, you are not maligned by one side, both the accusers and the defenders who are mentioning you in total abundance, as you know. You will make that statement, it will go to the Hansard, it will go to the records, it will not be subject to any debate by anybody. But I'll give you the opportunity to purge all those allegations against you. One time. Yes, Honorable T.J. Kajuan.
You know, Honorable Kajuan, you are a member of the committee. Yes, I am. And uh, uh, whatever speaker, you wanted to do, you should have. I, I don't want to speak to the substance of every, uh, the issues that are before us, because to do, to do mm -hmm. so, I would be a judge in my own course. But, Mr. Speaker, this is the first time. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm trying to get your attention on this. Uh, I, I want to explore a constitutional issue. Uh, my, my minority leader, if you could just allow me to get the ear of the speaker. Wait. Okay, oh, let me hear the Honorable T.J. Kajwami. Mr. Speaker, I, I rise like to speak minutes. for, yes, just one minute, for okay. the development of jurisprudence, custom and tradition in this house. This is the first time ever in the history of uh, uh, the new constitution that we have tackled this matter. The other house has been lucky that in many occasions they have handled such matters. And so it is important, uh, Mr. Speaker, that you go in history accepting a precedent, the legal foundation by which many and others, and you know, Mr. Speaker, it is this House that can impeach or can call the President to question. It is this House that can call um, emergency or can declare war in this country. And so, Mr. Speaker, I just think that this gives you an opportunity to put the law in such a manner that everybody will have the foundation. Mr. Speaker, you see, a report has been given to you. You have looked at that report. You Actually, the words you have used, you have scanned that report. In law, you have perused that report. And you have approved it. But the report has not been given to the members here. The members do not have an opportunity to go to room 8 to read that report, even if that report would die here. But to suggest that the members would uh, accept a report one way or the other without applying their cognitive abilities to it, either to understand that the issues were unsubstantiated or not, would be to deny this House its own conscience and to take away its power to debate. Mr. Speaker, I urge you, I urge you, over. I urge you, Mr. Speaker, that you create a, a room by which as many members as possible may be able to comment on such, uh, such issues, even if, it is going to, uh, even if it is going to die here. But give an opportunity for people to... Honorable T.J. Kajwang. I have no doubt that you have been uh, listening to me and I know you are a very brilliant, uh, distinguished learned junior. I have said, and you remember what uh, Senior Counsel Tienda Molo raised and pointed out, under the Constitution, and the President we are setting is observance of the Constitution and outstanding orders, under the Constitution, when the report comes back to the House and it says allegations are unsubstantiated, the matter ends there. Even the idea of reading the report becomes an academic exercise. Anybody who wants to read that report is available in the table office. You can pick it and read it. The converse is that if the report had found the allegations substantiated, then the Speaker would have been obligated to set another day for the House to sit. And you will then, as a plenary, debate the report and vote on it. 
At that stage, then anybody will peruse the report, will mark the report, will underline the report, will critique the report, will do anything with the report and convince the House that the report is right or wrong and that decision will be made by a vote by the whole House. In the absence of the latter, then the idea of members reading the report remains academic. The Speaker cannot stop you from later looking for the report and reading it. The Speaker cannot stop you from going out there and commenting on the report. But the chips will lie where they fell on the floor of this House. So I'll now go back to where I started. And the first member I'll call to, to make a comment is one Julius Melly. Yes, Okello, okay, what is it? Yes, Okello. Okay, I, I, I thank you. Order, let's listen to Member Fonyando. I thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I would want to borrow your mind on this. A clear reading of uh, that Article 159 in its entirety, together, uh, Article 152, in its entirety, yeah, particularly sub-article 9, read together with our standing order number 66, Honorable Speaker, I do believe that the drafters of these two laws, both the standing orders and the Constitution, envisaged a position of unanimity on a matter. Honorable Speaker, in a situation where there is division, there is a minority view. There is no unanimous decision arrived at. Honorable Speaker, that was not envisaged when this was being written, Honorable Speaker. So how do we as a House proceed, therefore, in the absence of a unanimous decision? Does it therefore subject it once again to members of Parliament to be heard? Because again, you know, on respect, Honorable Speaker, you it is 150 point. members Honourable again is seven. Take your seat. 150 again is seven. You Honourable made Speaker. your point. Honorable Kello, you are a seasoned member, and you should appreciate what our standing orders say. The report that has been tabled here is from a committee of 11. Seven have signed and substantiated, four have penned a descending opinion. From our standing orders, the committee cannot bring to the House two reports. It is one report with a descending opinion. It remains one report. Two, there is no provision in the standing orders or in the Constitution that requires that such a report must carry total unanimity. It only talks of majority members of the committee. And that's what is before us, Honorable Okello. So you are trying to borrow my wisdom. I think I've discharged it to you. <laughs> yes, Wanjala. Wanjala, what is your point of order? Yeah. I mentioned the standing order that you are relying on. That's what every member has been doing. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, I know you are biased against me, and I'm, take, I'm not talking. Mr. Speaker, what is standing I, order? I, I don't like want you? to indulge in, in, in the issue of, of what the report is all about. But the standing order 159 that allows this motion to come in. Mr. Speaker, I have been in this house and you have been in this house. This exercise, Mr. Speaker, is very expensive for a member of parliament to bring these kind of motions, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I watched them on the Which TV. standing order did you say? 159? It has no relevance to what you are saying whatsoever. So take your seat. Yes, Unguli. Order, honorable members. Order, honorable Angela. 
you've had your bite erroneously, the standing order you are talking about has absolutely nothing to do with what you are saying. <laughs> at all, at all. Yes, Sunguli? Uh, Mr. Speaker, I know that um, you are quite faithful to the... I don't know whether, Mr. Speaker, you can... Mr. Speaker, I know that you are very faithful to the standing orders. Pardon? I know you are faithful to the standing orders. Yes. And it's not for, for nothing because you and I were in the original committee that actually established these standing orders. And you know, Mr. Speaker, that that was in the 90s. And uh, don't you think, because you sit in the committee that actually rectifies standing orders, don't you think that it is time we move that this kind of um, standing order be amended so that we do not leave the authority of parliament in the hands of very few people, especially in such a very grave matter? Thank you, Julia Sunguli. You are a lawyer. You know the law is the law. It's not what it ought to be. And the law as it is now is what I have said. The standing orders belong to this house. If in your wisdom you wish to amend the standing orders, so be it. It is not the speaker to amend the standing orders. If the house wants to amend standing orders, they are dynamic. As you know, the standing orders that you and I and the late Godana and the late Oboja drafted have been amended several times to where they are today and you can amend them as you wish. Now let me, honorable members, allow a few members to make comments, then we go to some other business. I'll start with the, the honorable Opio and I. Each member has three minutes. Uh, the honorable speaker. Uh, three it, minutes. Is, is it? Huh? I thought we agreed. Anyway. Majority and minority, I'll give you five each, each member three minutes. Uh, sir. Honorable Speaker, I think we should be a little bit more patient on this matter, Honorable Speaker, because this is a very, very important matter. Honorable Speaker, this is the first time this House, since 2010, is dealing with a motion for the impeachment of a cabinet circuit. It is the first time we are dealing with such a situation, Honorable Speaker. And therefore, I want to plead with you that you give us a little bit more time. Honorable Speaker, I want to start from where Honorable Kelly left, very, very quickly. Honorable Speaker, I don't think it was the intention of the framers of our Constitution, 2010, that a decision of this House would be countermanded by a group of seven people. Honorable Speaker, when we took a vote on this matter last Thursday, a whole 149 members of this House voted overwhelmingly to impeach Cabinet Secretary Mudiga Linturi. It was not the intention, I submit, of the framers of the Constitution when they enacted Article 152, Sub Article 9, read together with Standing Order 66. Seven, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, and I'm sure you know, you can teach us better. There's a danger in this uh, idea of literally interpreting the law. I'm sure you know both better than me of the, the Berryman case of 1946. Honorable Speaker, a purposive interpretation of the law would actually lead us to the conclusion that the decision of that select committee should have been subjected to validation of the whole house. Have you said that, Honorable Speaker? There is a higher, there's a higher moral responsibility, Honorable Speaker, on the part of the cabinet secretary, and indeed on the part of the appointing authority, following the overwhelming decision of this house last Thursday, in a vote of 149 against 36, I don't think this matter should have even gone up to the Select Committee stage. In more decent democracies, the moment this House voted 149 against 36 to send Mr. Minturi home, the decent thing he should have done was to resign. Failure to resign who would have expected the appointing authority to sack him, Honorable Speaker. Those two have not happened. Honorable Speaker, we are now back here today. We are back here today 
to continue from where we left last Thursday. Honorable Speaker, I want to persuade my colleague members not to give up, regardless of what the, the minority of seven members have decided. Honorable Speaker, again, there's all the available evidence, all the available evidence, the minority of seven members who have decided to let the Cabinet Secretary scot free. This House must remain firm. This House must remain firm and assert, and assert its authority. Honorable Speaker, I dare say that following the vote of last Thursday of 149 against 36, this House will be in its rightful place to resolve not to have any dealings with the Cabinet Secretary, Medica Linturi. Honorable Speaker, this House has got the sovereign power on behalf of the people of, the, of this country to decide not to recognize Medica Linturi as a Cabinet Secretary in this government. Honorable Speaker, regardless and despite the, the resolution of the minority of four, of, of, of seven, Honorable Speaker, the minority of seven have actually brought this house to shame, if I may say so. You have brought the authority of this house into disrepute. They have actually made us become a laughing stock in the eyes of the public. And therefore, to, re to remedy, remedy that, that anomaly, to remedy that anomaly, Honorable Speaker, I would be actually right, I would be in order to persuade this house to, to decline, to refuse, to refuse to recognize Medica Linturi as Cabinet Secretary from now going forward and to continue to urge the appointing authority, who is the President, to take the most logical step and sack this Cabinet Secretary, if only to save this country from the kind of ridicule it has been subjected to. With those very many remarks, Honorable Speaker, I reject and I oppose. Thank you. Order, Honorable Wandai, there is nothing to reject. You just make your comments. You are not going to vote anything. Uh, I now invite Honorable Osoro. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, this is a house of debate and procedures. And I dare say, Honorable Speaker, that this is a granary of wisdom where every profession is actually represented here. We have uh, experienced uh, lawyers, of the, uh, advocates of the High Court, we have doctors, we have accountants. We have bishops. We also have the wannabe uh, men of cloth. Could be the, I, I think Honorable Junette qualifies to be a sheikh. So this is a house where people are drawn from different professions and very experienced in different fields. Honorable Speaker, this is also a house once one debates must agree that it is a house where the majority will have their way and minority will have their say. When this motion was brought before this House, Honorable Speaker, the majority had their way, as it were then. But the procedures took center stage thereafter. After the majority took, uh, had their way, the procedures were followed. The uh, minority proposed their names. The majority uh, proposed their names. An ad hoc committee was uh, uh, formed, Honorable Speaker. And they had their own elections, where they elected a chair to chair the ad hoc committee. And the chair of the other committee, Honorable Speaker, the Honorable Naomi Wako, is a reverend, is a person of great integrity, a person that has served this country in her capacity as a reverend, a person that has served this country as a canon, a person that has served this country as a senator, and a person now who is serving this country, Honorable Speaker, as the deputy majority whip, Honorable Speaker. And all the proceedings, Honorable Speaker, were in full glare of the camera. We all watched what was happening. It was basically drama. Everything that you are watching, Honorable Speaker, in the proceedings were actually a drama. What we were hearing, Honorable Speaker, is similar to what was actually being shown or rather presented before, or brought before uh, the, the, the matrimonial court the other day. And Honorable Speaker, there is no way a house of competence could have admitted the evidence that was brought. It was, there was nothing watertight as it was being presented, Honorable Speaker. And Honorable Wamboka, as much as he tried, of course, to in his role as a member of parliament under article 95 to oversight Honorable speaker he did not manage to raise a strong case to bring a watertight evidence 
to, to, to grow his, I mean, profile by pushing through a watertight case, Honorable Speaker, to have uh, the Honorable Ituri impeached. So, Honorable Speaker, I support the report by this committee because I believe in them, and as the house of debate, a house that believes in strength, a house that believes in procedures, Honorable Speaker, we proceed, it is done, we are now done with the whole thing, and now we proceed with the other, Honorable Speaker. Thank you very much. Honorable Robert Mbui, three minutes. So, yeah, com yeah thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Your thoughts. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Kenyan farmers were dipped into purchasing uh, fake fertilizer through NCPB under the full glare and the watch of the CS for Agriculture. Mr. Speaker, a motion was brought to this House to dismiss that uh, CS, and members of the House voted overwhelmingly to get rid of the CS. Then, Mr. Speaker, a, co a committee of the House was put together to go and confirm the report and the vote of the members of Parliament. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, the members that were put in the committee, seven of them went and turned the verdict of 149 members of Parliament. And, Mr. Speaker, for the record, only four members gave a dissenting opinion. And, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker for the record, the Honorable T.J. Kajuang, the Honorable Yusuf Farah, the Honorable Catherine Omanyo, and the Honorable Robert Mbui stood with the Kenyan farmers and said enough is enough and the CS must go. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the reality is this, that when we went to that committee, Mr. Speaker, the committee, instead of carrying out investigation as was told by this House, the committee went and turned itself into a Supreme Court of Parliament of Kenya, presided over, Mr. Speaker, by the Lady Justice Naomi Wako. And, Mr. Speaker, the rest of us became judges. Mr. Speaker, the question we are asking is this. Is the committee of the House supposed to operate like a court, or are we supposed to continue operating like a committee of the House? Order, Honorable Mboui. Honorable Mboui, I did guide you, and you are a member of the committee. I told you you are quasi-judicial. Rules of evidence apply, limitations on hearsay apply, and everything that pertains to proceedings in a judicial court applies. You are quasi-judicial. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We are quasi-judicial, but we became a court of law. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, there was one major issue that we noted, that uh, there were key witnesses that Mr. Speaker was supposed to have been called. The Constitution anticipates that we call witnesses, the standing orders of this House and even the rules of the committee were allowing us to call members to come and give witness uh, evidence. Mr. Speaker, unfortunately, two key witnesses, the PS for Agriculture and the COO of one of the companies that is supposedly mentioned in this fake fertilizer scandal, were actually not called. Honorable Mbui, as a member of the committee, you are truly being wiser after the event. Yeah. Uh, Honorable John Paul John Paul Three minutes You better compose your thoughts quickly Give John Paul the mic there you Thank are. you Thank you Thank you very much Mr. Speaker Mr. Speaker I stand to support the report from the committee and to commend Mr. Speaker, their good work which they, they did within 10 days, Mr. Speaker. It is commendable that within 10 days, Mr. Speaker, the committee was able to gather evidence and to interrogate the, uh, both the parties, Mr. Speaker. And today, Mr. Speaker, it has come to the uh, limelight of Kenyans, Mr. Speaker, that uh, the one CS medical inquiry is clean, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I urge members when we, when the motion is such like uh, such as this, Mr. Speaker, is brought before the before this house, Mr. Speaker, is good for any member who is bringing such motion, Mr. Speaker, of impeachment to do due diligence, Mr. Speaker, and gather enough evidence, Mr. Speaker, which can. Uh, which can, uh, which can uh, get maybe the minister with, uh, with the mistake which, Mr. Speaker, they had already seen the years. So, Mr. Speaker, this committee consisted of 
the competence members, Mr. Speaker, who are capable of, uh, of uh, interrogating the CS, Mr. Speaker, and they were able to bring forth, Mr. Speaker, to this honorable house, Mr. Speaker, that the CS is clean. Mr. Speaker, it should also be noted that uh, when impeachment motion is brought in this house, it should not bro uh, be brought, Mr. Speaker, with perception that maybe because, uh, because maybe a person has a bad name or maybe the look of that person, Mr. Speaker, that person maybe qualifies to be impeached. So my advice to the CS Agriculture, Mr. Speaker, is that he should stand firm, do work to the Kenyans, Mr. Speaker, so that the Kenyans can can have enough food, Mr. Speaker. The work he is doing currently is doing good. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I beg to support this report. Thank you. Irene Mayaka, three minutes. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I also stand here to express my complete disappointment that honorable, seven honorable members averted the will of so many other members of this house. And honorable speaker, I am actually really disappointed on behalf of the farmers of not only Nyamira, but the whole of Kenya. Honorable speaker, Article 153 of our constitution is very clear that the CS is accountable individually and collectively to the president of this country. And in so doing, honorable speaker, it also says that the Honorable CS is stopped from not taking accountability when anything goes wrong in his ministry. Honorable Speaker, the CS cannot run away from the fact that the ultimate responsibility actually stands with him. Honorable Speaker, I watched the proceedings of the committee and one of the things that really caught my eye is when the CS proudly demonstrated to the committee of the positive things that he has done for that particular ministry. But the same CS refuses to take responsibility when one thing goes wrong in his ministry. Honorable Speaker, if you look at Article 201 of our Constitution, it clearly says that public money shall be spent prudently and responsibly. It does not make sense, therefore, Honorable Speaker, why money that was allocated to one particular part of the department was reallocated to NCPD and therefore used in a manner that was not prudent. I do not understand, therefore, Honorable Speaker, how the select committee, the seven of them, decided that this CS was not culpable of the crimes that he committed. Honorable Speaker, I would also like to state this, that the Article 43 of our Constitution is very clear. It says that every person has a right to free access of food, but not only food, but that food that is actually of good quality. Honorable Speaker, the CS in his admission said that out of the three million bags, that only 3,000 bags were actually fake fertilizer and that they withdrew this from the people. But Honorable Speaker, that is not taking enough responsibility for a fault like that. Because Honorable Speaker, what if this particular... Time is up, uh, Honorable... Mayaka, Dr. Mutunga. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker, for the opportunity to speak on this motion. You have speaker, three minutes. Honorable Speaker, as the chair of the Committee on Agriculture and Livestock Development, I am sure the House knows that you have been in, 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 making an inquiry on this issue. Honourable Speaker, I understand the feelings of the members. This is the first motion of impeachment that we've had. I was there in the last time there was none, in this time there is one. But Honourable Speaker, the law and the constitution is very clear. And I wish to thank you for invoking going beyond the provisions of Article 1529A, giving us an opportunity to comment on this motion, even if the business has already been done. Honorable Speaker, as a committee, we have not 
completed our work. And I want to put it correctly, Honorable Speaker, that the mover of the motion approached me. And I told him the business is not yet done. It would have been prudent to wait until we finish with the report, bring that report to the table of the House, and then the mover would have looked at this report and made a decision whether there is anything that would probably stand the impeachment trial. So, Honorable Speaker, in my very considered opinion, this motion was taken in haste. We should have taken more time so that we consider the report when it is brought before the House. Honorable Speaker, our committee or my committee has been looking at the entire scope of the subsidy program. And we have unearthed many issues. But this was done in full glare of the media. And that, I believe, is the reason why the members of this House believe there was something wrong with this particular issue. That Honorable Vika Lintorian committed a crime. Honorable Speaker, I think it would have been good to wait for the report. Finally, Honorable Speaker, as we move forward as a House, we cannot make decisions based on things that we cannot substantiate, things that we cannot fully address and give evidence. I do stand, Honorable Speaker, to support the seven member and state the fact that we have always made decisions in this House. We have made decisions at the committee level. We have made decisions at the board level. And there is always voting. The number that, become, that is more than the other takes the day. Your so time it is, is not really the numbers. It is basically the decision of the committee. And you have been giving us enough to give us an opportunity to comment. One House Speaker, the, the report will be laid on the table of this House, and the House will look at the report and see what has, what has gone on. Because we are not looking at individuals, we are looking at the entire... Otienda Molo. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this, in the majority opinion, has singularly failed Kenyans and must carry a badge of shame on behalf of this House. For the avoidance of doubt, Mr. Speaker, Kenyans must know that the seven, six members of the Kenya Kwanzaa MPs in the team and their surrogates in Jubilee all voted to save the minister. It is only the four from Azimio who stood with Kenyan farmers. And so the farmers of Kenya must know who between Kenya Kwanzaa and Azimio are truly their friends. Mr. Speaker, it is good that Parliament spoke and spoke in a bipartisan manner. So we as a House have vindicated, but the committee has failed to respect the House as a whole. In proper democracies, the vote by Parliament in itself should have invited resignation by the Minister without even waiting for the committee to do its work. But we are not in a proper democracy under this regime. Mr. Speaker, what now must save farmers is the action by the President. The President can act and save, reflect the wishes of this House by the stroke of a pen. He does not need this House to resolve that issue. Mr. Speaker, secondly, it must be noted, and some members had questioned the wisdom of Article 152. Article 152 mirrors Article 167 in terms of the procedure for removal of a judge. Only that in that article, the Judicial Service Commission plays the role we played, and the Tribunal plays the role that the committee did. It is expected under the Constitution that the committee would be a quasi-judicial committee that will look into the merit of the issue. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, the committee, most of its members went with a preconception because they'd already spoken here against that motion. And instead of therefore ex ex exercising independence of mind, they went with a fixed uh, uh, thought. Mr. Speaker, we must learn a lesson. Number one, we should not allow the majority leader to sabotage such a motion as he did in this case. Number two, Mr. Speaker, the mover should be the one to suggest the names of those constituting the select committee. And more importantly, number three, Mr. Speaker, we should ensure that the members are knowledgeable, they have integrity, and they are independent. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Tienda Molo. Uh, Rindikiri. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You have three minutes. I would like to support the verdict that has been passed 
by the select committee led by their chairman, Madam Waku. Mr. Speaker, I want to remind this house. Every year we celebrate what is called Easter. Mr. Speaker, during crucifixion of Jesus, the multitude called for crucifixion of Jesus. And they said, let's release Barnabas. Mr. Speaker, what we are hearing now is people calling for crucifixion of Jesus and saying, release Barnabas. Mr. Speaker, we cannot pretend as a house. I am very saddened to hear the vice chair of this committee, a man I respect and a mentor, disowning the sittings. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Vice Chairman sat for that, com that committee for three days, including the report lighting. And at no single time did he uh, withdrew from the position of vice chairmanship. Mr. Speaker, the decision of the chair and the decision of the vice chair are one and the same. So we cannot play at for the public gallery. Mr. Speaker, we cannot dictate terms as for the president of this republic should do. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Karintoli cannot be sacrificed for doing what is good. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Karintoli did not say these three changes be brought against him. Mr. Speaker, the mover, first of all, he totally failed to prove the case himself. The failure of this, the failure of the, uh, the, the move of the motion, he brought matters that he could not even himself substantiate. He went ahead to call for evidence support calling the PS, calling the, 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 the MD of Kale uh, uh, Chemicals. Mr. Speaker, he was looking, he was looking for evidence. He should have sought for good evidence before proceeding to bring the motion in Parliament. So, Mr. Speaker, let's abide by the rules of Parliament. Let's abide by the rules that we have set ourselves. Mr. Speaker, it is a shame to play for the public gallery to sacrifice a one person who has a track record of good performance in this country. And Mr. Speaker, we shall not listen to the public. We shall listen to the rules of this parliament. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Junaid Mohammed. Yes. For avoidance of doubt, I ask your leaders and this happens in every democracy on certain Thank issues you. the leaders cut, cut, have cut, cut, a discretion to tell the speaker who they think should speak for them on a matter speaker mr speaker there are your leaders uh, today was a sad day indeed very sad day for our country mr speaker mr speaker it is for sure that this was not the expectations of the kenyan people today they expected an indictment because, Mr. Speaker, what happened in this country by supplying fake fertilizer to the public, to Kenyans, Mr. Speaker, is a very grievous matter, Mr. Speaker. And for us to exonerate a cabinet minister who presided over that, Mr. Speaker, is also a very, very sad thing, it's a sad thing Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we have won the, the battle, but we have lost the war. Why do I say so? Since the inception, Mr. Speaker, of the new constitution, this is the first time an impeachment of a cabinet minister went through the second stage. Uh, after collection of the signature, approval of the speaker, and then it went through the house and went to the committee. I remember in the earlier two parliaments, Mr. Speaker, it never used to go past the, the uh, tabling of the motion, Mr. Speaker. So we have made a progress, and I want to thank Honorable Wamboka, who remains a hero, Mr. Speaker, in this country, for taking the initiative to save the Kenyan farmers, Mr. Speaker. I, if you watched, because the proceedings were live on TV, Mr. Speaker, what Honorable Linturi was talking about, instead of telling Kenyans how fake fertilizers found, found itself in the, in, the, in the market, he talked about the famous episode, the soap opera of his love gone bad, Mr. Speaker, with the Honorable Keitan. Mr. Speaker, if we continue like this, then in the national holidays, when people are given honors, Mr. Speaker, we should not corruption as one of the honors that is awarded, Mr. Speaker. Corruption should not become a badge of honor in this country, Mr. Speaker. How can this House preside over a committee report that has turned 
the will of 346, 49 members upside down, Mr. Speaker. And they know very well the mood of the House was that they want the minister impeached. Now, it is now the, the responsibility of the appointing authority to sack that minister as late as, as early as this afternoon, Mr. Speaker. Lastly, Mr. Speaker, if you are in mature democracy, this cabinet secretary will have resigned long time ago, Mr. Speaker. He will not have been in the office by now. He will have left the office and because he has no moral authority to serve Kenyans anymore, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this parliament cannot be used as a rubber stamp, the way I see it happening today. If the fake fertilizer thing has gone the way it is going today, then fake medicine will go through, fake water will go through, fake everything will go through in this country, and the people who are going to suffer in this country, Mr. Speaker, is the Kenyan people, Mr. Speaker. If we were elected, and this is not what the Sunni East people today expected, Mr. Speaker, when I saw the constitution of the committee that was done by the majority leader, the Ichungwa, <laughs> give him two seconds. Mr. Speaker, when I saw the constitution of the committee that was done by the majority leader, the seven members from his side, I knew this is an exercise in futility. I knew the matter is dead on arrival. I could see the faces there. I know them. I have been in this corridor. I have been in this parliament long enough. I have operated in this corridor of this parliament. I knew this better complete. No report, nothing useful will come out of the committee. Thank you very much. I submit the speaker. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. And I hear what the leader of my, uh, the minority whip is saying. And it is true, Honorable Speaker, that if you have been here long enough, like the Honorable Junette Mohammed, and many others, including Robert Mbui, who was a member of this select committee. You would know then that impeachment of a cabinet secretary is not a matter that you vote and make a decision based on emotions. It's also not a matter that you decide based on whether you like somebody or you dislike them, or whether they answer your calls or reply to your texts, it is a matter that is based on the law. Honorable Speaker, the preliminary objections you had from the Honorable Tiende Amolo and the leader of minority speaks volumes to the issues that I was speaking to here last week. That one, we sought to impeach a cabinet secretary without duly considering the provisions of Article 152 of our Constitution, and especially so Article 152.7, and our standing orders from standing order 64 to 68. Honorable Speaker, you remember me advising the Honorable, uh, uh, the sponsor of the motion, the Honorable Amboka, that if I were him, I would have been patient to allow conclusion, a logical conclusion of the inquiry by the, a committee of this House under the leadership of Honorable Mutunga, the Committee on Agriculture, that I would have been patient to allow investigative agencies to investigate and see if there's culpability on either the cabinet secretary or any other public officer before proposing an impeachment motion. Honorable Speaker, this report, as you said, it is good for academics. And it is important that all the 349 members of this House read that report so that they understand that impeaching a cabinet secretary can never be anchored on our feelings, our emotions, and whether we like somebody or dislike them. That we must ensure any time you want to impeach a cabinet secretary or a public official, it is based on what is provided for in law. Was there a particularity in the allegations in that motion? I submitted the Honorable Speaker last week that the motion was laden with generalities and newspaper articles and therefore would never have passed the test of time if you subjected it to the provision of the Constitution, our own standing orders, and indeed precedents that has been set by courts of law. And I pointed out the famous Wambora cases, because Governor Wambora, Honorable Speaker, you, know, you remember, is one of the public officers that were impeached more than any other public officer. And therefore, I want to urge members, Honorable Speaker, that this becomes a learning, a lesson to learn for us as a house. If we propose motions to impeach cabinet secretaries for the sake of it, 
we will make this house extremely important. We will become important because we are acting at the whim of the moment. We are not patient to get substantive issues that can truly impeach a cabinet secretary. I look forward to a day on a speaker that under the provision of a 2010 constitution, we will offer meaningful oversight over cabinet secretaries that we shall take our work seriously as a house and we make sure honorable speaker that if we do an inquiry like we were doing honorable speaker we base all our deliberations on facts and not emotions honorable speaker i hope honorable speaker that this report when we read we will be able to internalize the reasons as to why those who say that all the allegations are not substantiated, the reasons and the reasoning behind them. Honorable Speaker, I know there are those who have expressed their minority opinion. And Honorable Speaker, I had a brief look at that report. And it is all based again on emotions and what they want to say are perceptions. Honorable Speaker, the drafters of our constitution, including the Honorable Tiede Amolo who drafted this constitution, should have then considered putting either under our values the question of perceptions or national values or probably part of the reasons under article 152 7 as uh, 152 of our constitution as to why you would impeach a cabinet secretary then we should have included perceptions but our laws our constitution our standing orders do not offer us an opportunity to impeach a cabinet secretary or any other public officer on the basis of perceptions. You may perceive somebody as dislikable, honorable speaker. You may perceive somebody as arrogant or as corrupt, but that is not provided for in the constitution and in our laws. We are the lawmakers. We are the first people who should be the first defenders. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I was saying, Honorable Speaker, we swear by the Bible and the Holy Quran when we take oath of office to defend the Constitution and the laws of this Republic, Honorable Speaker. We must always be at the forefront to defend the Constitution and the laws of our country, Honorable Speaker. So that tomorrow, Honorable Speaker, if the Honorable Junet Mohammed gets the opportunity to serve as a Cabinet Secretary, I will not seek to impeach him on the basis of my perceptions that are not, are not objective at all. That I will seek to impeach the Honorable Junet on the basis of his performance and that which is provided for our, under our constitution. Honorable Speaker, it is easy to speak to the gallery, to speak to the media, Honorable Speaker, because the media are saying this and that. I have seen lawyers saying that members of parliament, if they 11, Somebody tweeted that uh, the 11 members times 5 million shillings is the basis on which this motion will be decided, Honorable Speaker. And it's a very senior council in this country, Honorable Speaker. It is shameful and unfortunate, Honorable Speaker, that a lawyer, an advocate of the High Court, a senior council, would be speaking to issues, Honorable Speaker, that any Kenyan who was watching the deliberations of this committee in the full, under the full glare of the public, of the media, Honorable Speaker, there was nothing that w could be substantiated. The Honorable Amboka could not substantiate anything, Honorable Speaker. And therefore, as I uh, commend the Honorable Amboka for his fortitude and temerity even to be able to push through a motion he knew was dead on arrival, since he could not substantiate, it was based on newspaper cuttings and all the other rumors you hear in town, Honorable Speaker, at least he had the fortitude to push it on to the end. Honorable Amboka, please next time I would urge you, let us stick to what is provided for by our standing orders, our own laws, and the constitution of the republic. If we do that, Honorable Speaker, this house and indeed parliament will have teeth to bite. Otherwise, if we abuse the provisions of our constitution to just collect signatures and sign signatures and push Honorable Speaker, in an attempt maybe to blackmail or intimidate cabinet secretaries, we shall be rendering this house important, and that will be the end of Parliament, Honorable Speaker. I pray to God and urge members 
that next time we want to impeach a cabinet secretary, yes, let okay. it be oh. based on the law, the order. constitution. Order, majority leader. Yes, we're checking what's the point of order. Mr. Speaker, I've been listening here today. What's the point of order? Mr. Speaker, is it in order for the Majority Leader to keep on referring to Honorable Wamboka as if he made a mistake to bring this particular motion? Because all through his speech, that was insinuating that it was a mistake for Honorable Wamboka to bring this motion, Mr. Speaker. Is it in order that he does that? First, I didn't understand it that way. And secondly, Honorable Wamboka made no mistake in exercising his right. Yes. And that's what Ichungwa said. All he said is that uh, exercise much more care and bring more tangible evidence. That's what I heard him say. Yes. Order, honorable members. I promised five. Five. It is done. I'll now call the next order. The matter is over. Call the next order. Your motion was spent. You moved, you replied. Yes. Next order. Order number 12, Committee of the Whole House. Order, honorable members, be upstanding. Honorable members. Order members, order. This is the committee of the whole house to consider the national disaster 